In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10, the Bible says this. For the Lord your God is a God of gods, the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not person nor taketh reward. That's Deuteronomy 10, 17. The Bible says, 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 25, For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. Oh, yes. Glory and honor are his in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Isn't that something? Psalm 95, 3 says this. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. Let's pray. Father, it's a blessing to be in the house of God. We praise you. We glorify you. We honor you because we know that you are a great God. We love you, Lord Jesus, because you first loved us. We just want to magnify your name today and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, I pray that you'd come and bless us today and meet with us today. Pour out your spirit today upon your people. Cause them to rejoice in thee. Cause them to be able to say hallelujah and blessed be the name of the Lord. God, just take my tongue, my mind, my lips and be glorified, dear God. Let your spirit move upon us in a mighty way. And we'll say thank you for we ask in Jesus' name to the glory of God. In the book of Job, chapter 36 and verse 26, Behold, God is, a, is great. And we know him not, neither can the number of his years be searched out. You know why? Because God is the eternal God. I want to speak to you today upon how great thou art. How great thou art. Man, that song stirs you, don't it? Wasn't that a blessing? Praise God. I mean, we could dismiss right now and go home and say we've been blessed to be in the presence of Almighty God. Such a great God to fill his presence. Well, when you think about great, you think about the Niagara Falls. I've never been there, but it's a tremendous falls. The roar of it is like God speaking like great thunder. The Grand Canyon, I've been the Grand Canyon. You think about great, it's great. It's a great hole in the ground. <laughs> it sure is. When you think about great, you think about Mount Everest. It's a great mountain. When we was flying across the Alps and we was going to land in Zurich, Switzerland, also Geneva, and the clouds was above, I mean, the mountains above the clouds. And he started down. I said, boy, I hope he knows where he's going. And because, man, it, the the mountains were sticking above the clouds. And so when we got on the cloud ceiling, we were still a long way up. I said, man, how big are those mountains? And so they're tremendous, aren't they? When you think about great, you think about the ocean, how great it is. Flying over that ocean, I say, man, oh, what a great ocean that is down there. And when you think about people, you think about Abraham. You think about Moses being great. You think about David being great. You think about the Apostle Paul being great. But what about the Almighty God? He's a great God. He's a supernatural God. He's the eternal God. He's all in all. Well, let me just speak to you a little while upon this. And just buckle your seatbelt and let's go. I've got about an hour of sermon. I'm going to have to give you in about 30 minutes. So just hang on. If I get fast, just get fast with me. If I speak fast, just let you stick up your ears like a mule and listen fast. Okay? Number one, he is a great God in knowledge, and he's a great God in knowledge. The Bible said he is understanding his infant. There's no limit in his understanding. I want to tell you there's a limit in my understanding. There's a limit in my knowledge. I mean, you may have a whole lot more knowledge than I do, and I know some of you do, uh, but you know what? His is unlimited knowledge, unlimited understanding. Oh, brother, he's great. How great is our God? The Bible said there's no searching in his understanding. Hast thou not heard, hast thou not understood the everlasting God, the creator of the end of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There's no searching in his understanding. They have computers, you turn them on, you have to wait on them sometimes to search and search. Hey, there's no searching in his understanding. You can ask him whatever you want to. You can ask him any question. You can ask him in the past. You can ask him in the future. You can ask him on high. You can ask him in the depths. He knows everything there is to know. There's nothing our God does not know, right? And the Bible said, there's nothing hid from his eyes. Nothing hid. There's nothing that God don't see. There's nothing that God don't understand. He sees in the dark. He knows what's going on in the dark. He knows what's going on in the secret. He knows what's going on in the closet. He knows what's going on behind closed doors. He knows, don't he? Because he's an infinite God. He's great. The Bible talks about in the book of Job. He said, he talks about the clouds. He talks about the springs of the, in the sea. He talks about the breath of the earth. And he said, what about the light and the darkness? You know where light comes from? You know where the darkness goes? 
Ghost when it's and the sun is turned on, when the sun comes up, when you cut the uh, your lights on, where does the darkness go? It disappears, right? He said, Hast thou seen the treasures of hell which I have reserved against the day of trouble? You know, they've taken out of these new versions. That's a prophecy about the tribulation period. Hey, that's the reason you need it. That old 1611 King James Bible. That's the reason you need that 1611 King James Bible. Because you've got to uh, copy the Word of God when you read it. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 3, the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. He's a God of knowledge. And we talk about some of these professors and some of these people that are just a walking encyclopedia. Well, he is too. Praise God because uh, he has great knowledge. The Bible says he has perfect knowledge. In the book of Job chapter 36, he has perfect knowledge. Sometimes our knowledge is skimpy. Sometimes it skips and hits and misses, don't it? But his knowledge don't. He's a great God. How great is our God? He's great in knowledge, isn't he? He surely is. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Number two, how great is our God? He's a great God in his wisdom. The Bible said the foundations of the earth. What, or what did I said him on, Job? He's talking about the great wisdom of God. He's asking Job all these questions. He said, Job, what did I set the earth on? Well, uh, you know what the earth is setting on? Setting on nothing. Is that the foundation of the earth? Is that what it's setting on? We know there's nothing out there, but what keeps it, what keeps it going right where it's at? He put it there, brother. God put it there. They talk about uh, gravity and all that stuff. Well, uh, what about them other planets? How come they stay right where God put them? God put them there. He, tells, he put them there and said, you just stay there and turn till I tell you to quit. <laughs> Amen. Until I bring you back in one of these days. Oh, brother, I want to tell you something in it. Sure is. He talks about it in the book of in the book of Psalms, O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Boy, in wisdom he's made everything. And I mean, all you've got to do is look at God's creation. His creation is amazing. I stand amazed. I stand amazed. I looked at God's different creatures. I look at the trees. I look at the mountains. I look at everything God's made. It's amazing. It's amazing. I stand amazed, brother. He's a great God, I'll tell you, isn't he? He's a God to be feared. He's a God to be worshipped. He's a God to be honored. And you better honor him and praise him. The Bible said in Psalm 136.5, To him that by wisdom made the heavens. Man, just think about God's wisdom in making the heavens. Then number three, he's great in his kindness. He's great. How great is our God? He's great in his kindness. Listen to what the Bible said in the book of Psalm 31, 21. Blessed be the Lord for he has shown me his marvelous kindness. His kindness is marvelous. Hey, ain't nobody been as kind as God. You ever met anybody real kind? Anybody know anybody real kind? Hey, nobody's been as kind as he. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Then the Bible said in Psalm 117, for his merciful kindness toward us. He's a merciful, he shows merciful kindness. Merciful kindness. Then the Bible talks about everlasting ki uh, kindness in the book of Isaiah 54. Everlasting kindness. Aren't you glad God's a God of everlasting kindness? When we get to eternity, he's going to show us his everlasting kindness. He's going to show us what kind of God he is. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. He said that again in Joel chapter 2. He said, of great kindness. So the Lord is great in his kindness. Kind, he's kind, he's kind. Thank God for his kindness. I'm glad he's a God of kindness. If he wasn't more, we'd be in trouble. In the book of Titus, chapter number 3, verse number 4. But after that the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done. His kindness has appeared. Do you know what it appeared to you? His kindness appeared to you and me. If it wasn't for his kindness, I want to ask you where you'd be tonight or today. Where would you be today? Then I want to pass on number four and say, what about his mercies? What about his mercies? His mercies are great. His mercies, for thy mercy is great in the heavens and thy truth under the clouds. His mercy is great to the heavens. Well, the Bible talks about Great mercies throughout the Bible. He talks about great mercy. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of kindness. He sure is. He talks about his manifold mercies. That means multiplied mercies. He don't just have one. He has a whole bunch of them. He just sows mercy on mercy on mercy on top of mercy. And it just as called mercy answered. That's the reason you're saved. Just as called and mercy answered. And so praise God we can say his manifold mercies. His manifold mercy. He talks about his tender mercies. God is a tender God. Like a mother, a tender mother. You know, uh, use the thing. Nurses are better. Women nurses are better than men nurses. And usually women doctors are better than men doctors. 
You know why? They're a little more tender. Them old rough doctors that just stick a needle just like that. <laughs> sometimes they think you ought to endure all that pain. But sometimes them women, they understand things a little better, don't they? My brother, he had a woman doctor, and when he died, uh, Carolyn said, or somebody said, said, boy, my brother Alvin said, he sure would have liked this thing, said all them women lined up because he was a ladies' man. <laughs> and his doctor, his lady doctor came. You know, not many doctors go when somebody dies, are they? I guess they have so many people that be showing up all the time, but she came to the uh, viewing. What about that? That's something that, well, he talks about his tender mercies. He talks about the sure mercies of David. He talks about God is the father of mercies. He's the father of mercies. If his mercy comes anywhere, it comes from God. God is the Father of all mercies. All mercies, it comes from God Almighty. How great thou art in thy mercies. Oh, praise God. I mean, if I could dance, I'd just kick up a, up a, a wheel right quick and dance a while for Jesus. Amen. The Bible said in the book of Psalms, Great is his mercy. For as heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. And I got in that old big old jet airplane that first time down there in Florida and left out, I began to see how great his mercy was. Man, that thing was up there in the clouds. Then you get on up there, you ride them old jets, they get up there 37, 38,000 feet. You look down, all you can see is the clouds maybe. Uh, all you can see, you can't see human beings, you can't even see cars. All you can see is a road or a river. You can't even tell how high mountains are. That's amazing. It. He said his mercy's like it. His mercy is like an ocean. He said, Psalm 108, Thy mercy is great above the heavens, and thy truth reaches to the clouds. Man, what about that? Psalm 59, I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy. How long has it been since you've been singing aloud of thy mercy? Y'all still out there? You haven't gone to sleep on me, have you? If you have, punch yourself wake yourself up. Jump up and wave your hands. Hey, hallelujah, sit back down. Amen. Glory to God, brother. It's time to sing of his mercy. He said, I'll sing of his, a lot of his mercy in the morning. That's when you get up drowsy. You feel ill. It's talking about little old Jeremy, my grandson, you know. And he said, little old Jeremy, he's ill when he wakes up. And little old Jeremy sitting there, I said, surely not little sweet Jeremy. He said, I'm afraid so, Papa. <laughs> I mean, when you get up the morning, you feel ill and bitter. Just get up and sing of his mercy and get up and sing to his praises. Thank God that'll change things around your house, brother. That'll change everything, won't it? It sure will. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Number five, he's great in his holiness. I didn't really look up any scriptures in this because I just thought of it as I sat in the study there a moment ago. I meant to look up some scripture on it, but I didn't even think of it. Until I sit in the study right there, and he's great in his holiness. There's no sin in Christ. There's no sin in God. He never sins in thought, word, or deed. Everything he does is righteous. And everything he does is righteous. He's a holy God. He's a holy one. He's the holy God. Thrice holy. Holy, holy Lord God Almighty. The seraphims and cherubims are flying around God's throne crying, Holy, holy, holy. Holy to God the Father, holy to God the Son, holy to God the Holy Spirit. He's a thrust holy God. He's holy. There is no sin in God. And without uh, sin, brother, what are you going to do when you stand in his presence? The only way you survive in the presence of Almighty God is to be washed in the blood. How the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son cleanses us from all sin. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. I'm glad, brother, we got a ticket today to heaven because of the blood of the Son of God. It is the blood that he has given on the cross. It washes our sins away. Oh, he's great in his holiness. Number six, right quick, he's great in his power. He's great in his power. Man, what power he has in creating power. He stood there in Genesis 1 and said, let it be. Right. He created the sun. Yeah, he, he created the moon. Amen. He created the earth. Right. He yeah. created the stars. Yeah. He created the ocean. Oh, man. I mean, can, can you get this in your little noggin? I mean, it's hard to get in that little noggin of yours. You know that? Right. It's hard for me to get. I mean, he just stood there and spoke. If you want something done, what do you got to do? You got to get up and do it, don't you? You ain't never made, you ain't never created nothing. Oh, you made stuff out of other stuff, but you ain't never created nothing. They talk about creating things. You ain't never created nothing. Because you got to, when you create, you got to bring something out of nothing. And he stood there and spoke, and it came into existence. 
And he threw the stars out there and he threw everything out there, all the galaxies and all the comets and all the constellations. He threw it out there and praise God, you know what he called them all by names, he threw them out. Now what about that? Isn't he a great God? My soul, could we shout a while? Says, we ought to just stand up and shout hallelujah. How great, how great, how great, how great he is. He's a mighty God. He's the almighty God. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And then you know what? He made it all, and he said, well, we need to put somebody down there. Well, he made all the animals. He made the animal world. He made the bird world. He made the fish world. He made things terrestrial. He made things terrestrial, celestial, and all that. In fact, he made everything that you see and everything you don't see. Right. See, you don't see them germs. You don't see what it takes to see under a microscope. You don't see them sails that you're made of. The old fellow down there, that's when I was going to school, he'd stick his arm out and he'd say there's 150,000 sails in that one arm. Whew. Wow, ain't that something? It's in one arm. He'd stick it out and say 150,000 sails in that one arm. Well, what about your whole body? And yet, brother, he made that. He put you all together. When he looked at old Adam, brother, old Adam was perfect. He was a perfect human being. You know the best looking man ever lived? There's old Adam, wasn't it? You know the best looking woman ever lived was Eve. You say, how you know that? Because God does things perfect. He looked at the earth and when everything he made, he said it was good. And brother, I look at it and I still say it's good, don't you? And so, you see, we kind of got corrupted along the way, but that's the most beautiful man ever was. He's the most smartest man. He's smarter than Einstein. I mean, he's, he's just right off the block, brother, and he was able to name all animals. What about that? Hey, hey, brother, what a great God we got. What a great God. Uh, so God made everything. He made the clouds. What about the heavenly world up there, the clouds? Don't, I, I'm always amazed at them clouds. They, sometimes they look like you just, just like a big old pillow you just lay down on. <laughs> but you ever rode an airplane through them? How many has ever rode an airplane through the clouds? How many never has rode an airplane through the clouds? Well, a few of you. I hope you get on one of them things right. It's like riding an model down a rough road. <laughs> I don't like them clouds. I don't like them clouds, no siree, but some, you have to ride through them every once in a while. We came back from Louisiana that time and it was snowing. We got over here, Charlotte, it was snowing. I was dreading, they said it's snowing Charlotte a little bit. I was dreading coming in there, but hey, that wasn't no, no sweat for that big old plane. It come right on through there, but that's amazing. You get up there in them clouds and you see that, uh, see that snow coming down. It's amazing, isn't it? And what amazed me one time, we was going, I think, out to uh, California or somewhere. No, it's when we went to Hawaii. That, he's flying right above the clouds. I mean, them clouds, just like me, right above this floor right here. He's on, I mean, them clouds, just like that. That's amazing. I mean, everything that God made is amazing. It's amazing. The clouds, uh, you know, the, just everything the Lord made. It's, it's, it's just amazing how he made all those things, the rain, the wind, the lightning, the thunder, the hurricanes, the tornadoes. You say God made all that? Well, I sure he did. Who else made them? He controls all that. And sometimes he has let man know he's in charge, amen? He sure does. Okay, he's great in his creating power. He's great in his delivering power. What do you mean? Well, look what he did to Israel. He took a nation out of another nation. He took out three million people and brought them out through great signs and wonders with a stretched out arm. The Bible said with great power. I mean, brother, those plagues happened one after another, just one after another, wham, wham, wham. He didn't wait two or three months to them. He just done one after another, boom, bing, bing. It's like a domino effect. Boy, those ten plagues came on Egypt. Pharaoh said, get out of here. I don't see your face no more. He said, you won't see us no more. They got out there, and there they was, you know, the stand at the Red Sea. Oh, Moses, here they come, here they come. They could see the dust of flying across the desert probably. And they looked, there's the Red Sea in front of them. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Moses, you brought us, here, brought us out here to get us killed. You should have left us down there. Hey, don't ever complain about what God's done for you, what he's going to do. He Just believe him. And Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of God. Stretch out that rod, Moses, and he stretched it out. And just imagine, God blew his nose. The Bible said with the breath of his nostrils. God blew out a space big enough, blessed be God, for three million people to get across in one night. And the Bible said he congealed the deep. That means he froze it. He froze that mud so they get across on dry ground. Hey, how great he is, how great he is. Don't you ever doubt him. He's a great God. He's a big God. You just need to believe him. 
just need to trust him, amen. He brought them on through, and they got out there, and they didn't have no water. They just complained, now we're going to die of thirst. They did have flocks too, didn't they? And you know what? He said, Moses, just hit the rock right there. Just smite that rock, which is a type of Jesus Christ smitten on the cross of Calvary. There's enough salvation to come from Calvary to save every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, anybody, and everybody can be saved if they'll just believe on the Son of God. How great, how great thou art, how great thou art. Oh, yes, sir. And so they got out there, and you know what? They didn't have no bread. What are we going to eat? God said, I'll just send some bread out of him. Amen. Yep. Every morning went out there and they gathered enough yeah, they did. for the day. He said, now on the sixth day, you get enough for two days. Yeah. Some of them got thinking they could squirrel some back. They didn't believe God. He said, just get enough for two days. Not three days, four days, just enough for two days. You know, that's a prayer Jesus told them to pray. Our Father, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. Don't you, don't, he don't want you to worry about 10 years down the line. He wants you to put him first now. Amen. Every day. And of course, let me get on. And you know, after a while, they get, we're tired of this man. That's, uh, we're tired of this. Hey, don't ever get tired of what God's got for you. When you do, you're in trouble, friend. You go to bellyache and complain, and you know what? You're going to get yourself in trouble. You're going to get yourself out of the will of God. You better stay right where God put you and thank him for it every day. And blessed be the name of the Lord. And you know what? God sent the quail. I mean, man, they was knocking them down. They let them fly just, you know, low enough that they could knock them down. They bing, bing. I don't know how they're doing it, but they probably they probably had their jars out there catching some of them. I don't know. And they was knocking them down, bang, bang, bang. And the Bible said some of them died with the teeth, the meat between their teeth, you know, because of their lust, because they're complaining, belly. Oh, don't complain, belly. I'm telling you, do all things that murmur and dispute, and that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, and midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, the Bible says. And so he's great in his power. Okay, then notice his healing power. Man, he healed the blind. He healed the dumb. Healed the deaf. Healed the cr cripples. Healed the lepers. All kind of diseases. There was no disease he called. There was nothing he had to call. He's almighty God. He's, he's how great he is. He's great. Lord, if thou willest, thou can make me whole. Jesus said, I will be thou made whole. Touched him and he's made whole just like that. There's that little woman. She's all been over, been over for 18 years. She, Jesus said, come here. She's back there. And you know, most people wouldn't even go to church like that, would they? Most people wouldn't even go to church like this brother back here. They say, I'm ashamed. Don't be ashamed to come to God's house because, hey, they healing in this house. There's salvation in this house. There's forgiveness in this house. There's blessing in the house of God, right? And he said, come here. She come trotting up there, and he touched her, and she was straight. Don't you know she got to shout and praise God? Hey, that's enough to shout a while on, amen. Yes, sir. He had a man there with a withered hand, little hands withered up, and he said, stretch it out. And I guess that little man said, how can I do that? He stretched it out, praise God, and made hold just like the other Hey, don't you know that man had a shouting spell? Don't you know he's hollering hallelujah? Praise be unto God. Hey, he's got healing power, don't he? He sure does. Jesus cast out the demons. Don't you know that was a happy day? That old a man who was, uh, you know, full of demons, and he was up there in the tombs cutting himself naked, couldn't be tamed, and had no, you know, interest in nothing going on down there in the regular world. I mean, he didn't care about his family, no doubt. But when Jesus touched him, cast them demons out of him, he was sitting at the feet of Jesus. He had his clothes on. He was in his right mind. Praise God. That's what the grace of God will do for you. That's what salvation will do. I'm telling you, he's able. He's able. He has healing power. He raised the dead. And one of these days, we're going to get up out of the grave. We're in the grave. Ain't no grave going to hold these bodies down one of these mornings. Thank God. I'm in the grave. He has been defeated because of Jesus Christ. Thank God he got up from the dead, never to die no more. He's not going to come walking down the road in sandals neither. He's going to come in the clouds and he's going to say, come up church. And the church is going home to be with him. I want to say right quickly, he has saving power. Saving power. I'm glad he saves from the guttermost to the uttermost. He'll save anybody and everybody will come to him. Oh, somebody said, that he won't save me. Oh, yes, he will. Hey, somebody said, I've committed unpardonable sin. Well, you'd probably be in eternity already if he had. Because you know what? 
I remember when J. Howard Smith preached that sermon on God's three deadlines. He said he had never known anybody lived over 24 hours to commit the unpardonable sin. Right. See, when you commit the unpardonable sin, there's no forgiveness in this world and in the world to come. Ain't no use God leaving you here because, hey, there's no forgiveness. You know why God's leaving some people here? He's giving, leaving them here to get saved, to hear the truth, to come to Christ, to be forgiven, to be washed from the sins. That's what you need to leave a lot of people here. They grow old in sin. Is he trying to get them saved? He wants to get, he's merciful. He's giving them time. He's giving them opportunities again and again. I believe that with all my soul, don't you? I sure do. Y'all still with me? Amen. And so he has saving power. He saves from sin, don't he? Somebody said, I can't quit this and I can't quit that. I know you can't yourself, but in him, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You say, I can't give up my bottle. Well, if you get saved, you can. I can't give up my drugs. If you get saved, you can. I can't give up my pornography. If you get saved, you can. He came to deliver him. He came to his own, his own received him, not but to as many as, re as received him. To them, he gave the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. He gives you the power to live right. He gives you the power to serve him. He gives you the power to lay these things down. You can say no. You can't say no in the flesh. This old flesh is weak. That's what Jesus said. The flesh is weak. Spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. You've got to remember that. Your flesh is weak, man. You're just as weak as you can be. But the spirit gives strength. He gives power, don't he? So he saves from sin. He saves from self. He'll save you from yourself. You know that? Old self gets in the way a lot of times, right? But he can save you from self. Oh, that scripture jumps up there every once in a while. You know, that old flesh, it, it gets, gets out of the way sometimes, don't it? But you know what? He said, finally, brother, what several things are true? What several things are honest? What several things are just? What several things are pure? What several things are lovely? What several things are good reported? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You know, I'll correct you in a lot of things. Yeah, that old devil gets you thinking about something you ought not to be thinking about. Just quote that scripture. Philippians 4, 7. Just quote that scripture. And that devil say, I'll see you later. He don't want you to think them things are true and honest. Them things are pure and just. That things are lovely and a good report. He wants you to think of them ugly things, wicked things, dirty things, corrupt things. That's what he wants you to think about. Hey, set your affections on things in heaven, not upon things upon the earth. Set your affections on heaven. That's where you're going, isn't it? If you're saved, that's where you're headed. And so think about heavenly things and glorious things and blessed things, how great he is. Okay, i got to hurry. My time's coming to a close almost. He's great in his wrath, his anger. Oh, preacher, you shouldn't have said that. Well, tell me, what about the flood? Who brought the flood upon the world? Who destroyed all of humanity except eight souls? Uh, all of them but eight souls. I, that was all that was left on planet Earth. There's been estimates given of how many people there was. There's a whole bunch of people on planet Earth at that time. But it destroyed the whole human race except eight souls. What about Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities, the plains? I mean, God rained fire and brimstone. It wasn't snow, it wasn't hail, it wasn't tornadoes, anything like that. It's fire and brimstone. It destroyed all them cities, the plains, Sodom and Gomorrah and Saborim and maybe some others. God's a God of anger and a God of wrath. He sure is. He's a great God. I mean, his anger is great. But he's long-suffering. Don't forget that he, he suffers long with people. What about Israel? His chosen people. I mean, this is his chosen people. I'm not, I'm not excluding the book of Judges, how many times they were oppressed and, you know, afflicted and ruled over by other nations. But I'm talking about when Assyria marched in there and took away the ten tribes, the northern tribes. Carried them off into a far country. I mean, think about that. Think about what would happen if Russia or some other country come in here and carry off all of us to another country. Where's God at? God was a God of wrath because he had warned them time and time and time and time again. Don't you think God's warned America? There was no other country I don't suppose has had any more gospel than this country's had. And so, brother, we better listen to what God has to say. We better stick up our ears and say, God, what are you saying? And then what about uh, Babylon? The other two tribes, the southern tribes called Judah, Judah and Benjamin, 
Here comes in Babylon, Jeremiah preaching 40 years. Judgment's coming, judgment's coming, judgment's coming. Repent, repent. Babylon's coming, they're coming, they're coming, judgment's coming. 40 years Jeremiah preached. They didn't believe him. They said, we don't believe you, Jeremiah. We don't believe God sent you. And what happened? Nebuchadnezzar's army come in there, killed and slayed many of them, carried many to Babylon as slaves, tore down the city, burnt down the temple of God, broke down the walls even. There they was for 70 years, laid desolate. There it was desolate. God is a God of wrath, folks. Just remember, he's a God of mercy, yes. He's a God who is long-suffering, but after a while, God says it's done. What about Rome? When Rome came in there, in A.D. 70, Jesus had already been here. He'd already been crucified. He'd, he'd offered himself to the, to the nation of Israel as their Messiah. Just like in the lesson today in the book of Luke, he said, as he read that scripture in Isaiah 51 or 61, he said, today the scripture's fulfilling your ears. You know what they did? They got so mad they tried to push him over the hill. They tried to kill him right there. I mean, these were people that was his, probably knew him from a childhood, grew up around. Well, this is, this is the son of Joseph. We know him. And here he is. Now he says he's the Messiah. They refused to believe him. They tried to kill him then. They've been trying to kill him ever since. They've been trying to kill his saints ever since, right? But here comes in Rome in AD 70 and lays that city flat. Burns down the temple again. Tires it down. Crowbars the rocks apart, thinking there might be some gold in there. They told him, roll them stones down the valley. There it is, carried off in the captivity. What about the time God let six million Jews die in the furnaces of, the, of that country over there, you know, slaughtering those, killing them. And not only so, a lot of others. I've, I've heard about millions of other Hitlers killed, not just the Jews, but others. Man, I mean, there's a time of slaughter. And what about the great tribulation that's coming on the world? It's the time of God's wrath. The Bible said his wrath's going to be poured out with any mercy. You know, most times God sends wrath, he puts a little mercy in it. He sprinkles mercy in it. So, uh, you know, it would be a little mercy in there. But the Bible said he pours out his wrath with no mercy, no mercy. There would be no mercy. We was talking about it in Sunday school lesson today. Can I preach all day? You think what, you, this little thing about the gas, you know, everybody's lined up trying to get gas. I mean, just one little pipeline had a little leaky. You think about when the cities fall, when the mountains fall, when the ocean is it turns to blood and all this thing. You, this world's going to be turned upside down, I'm telling you men and women. It's going to be an awful time. You think about the desolation and you think about what people's going to do. You better get saved so you'll be in the rapture. Amen. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. I mean, he's a God, a great God. He's great in his wrath. But let me close on this. He's great in his love. <laughs> how great thou art. How great your love is, Lord. His love is so great. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How great is his love. The Bible said, God committed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What love, what love. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we killed all the day long. We were counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, and all these things are more than conquered through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor principality, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What love, what love that will keep us. Oh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Ephesians 2, 4. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace of your Savior. And hath raised us up to, together, made us sit together in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus, for by grace of your Savior, through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not a work lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. How great he is today in his love. He loved you enough that he died for you. He loved you enough that when you was no sinner, he died for you. And you know what? He's willing to save you today if you're not saved. 
Oh, he's blessed us. He's blessed us and blessed us and blessed us. I hope you receive those blessings with thanksgiving. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Could I see the hand of every person you say, Preacher, I 